I am too cowardly to don the fatigues and serve for my country and thus am committing my time to slandering an entire people whom I've never met nor do I care to meet. Ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while that you shouldn't have fucked with? That's me. Kiss my ass. Fuck your ass. Kiss my ass. Make it wet. Kiss my ass. Hold the tongue. Folks, I hope your day's going well, and if it isn't, it makes my job easier. As many of you know, Clint Eastwood's newest film, American Sniper, an adaptation of the memoirs of the same name, originally authored by the late Navy SEAL Chris Kyle, is making some serious waves, to say the least. The film has opened to massive praise from both critics and filmgoers, and is actually smashing box office records for a January release. This is something unheard of, Primarily because the movie was released in January. It's an age-old movie joke. If you want to bomb a movie, release it in January. But the movie, from what I've read, tells the story of not really Chris Kyle the sniper, but Chris, but of Chris Kyle the man. A man who has been torn apart by things he's had to do in war. The movie does not portray the men of the armed forces as they're typically portrayed in Hollywood films. In other words, they're not the invincible, gun-toting, super badasses from the Arnold Schwarzenegger explosion fest of the 80s, nor are they the conscience-lacking murderous drones like the one seen in James Cameron's Blavatar. It portrays them as men with faults. From what I've read, it portrays them as men with faults who are overseas, fighting to ensure that both they and their fellow soldiers make it back home to their families alive. Just centered around Chris Kyle. Keep in mind, I only know of this from word of mouth. I myself haven't actually seen the film. I only go to the movies once a month, and I've already seen my movie for January, Taken 3. Also, truth be told, I'm always weird about going to a movie that... Everybody is going to, and everybody is talking about. The hype has been built up so much. By the time I get into the movie, it may end up not being as good as everybody makes it out to be. Now, I don't want to go off on a rant here, but as is more predictable than a Pixar movie, any time a Hollywood movie comes along that doesn't go seven trillion miles out of its way to degrade the U.S. military, there's bound to be a sea of chiclet brains who are going to go that seven trillion miles that the movie failed to go and take to the internet to voice their shrill, half-cocked, half-assed excuse of an opinion that roughly translates to I am too cowardly to don the fatigues and serve for my country and thus am committing my time to slandering an entire people whom I've never met nor do I care to meet. People like Michael Moore, who attempted to use a personal story, quote-unquote, about how supposedly his uncle was killed in World War II as justification for claiming snipers are cowards. Michael Moore, the bulbous, self-absorbed liar and hypocrite who uses the free market capitalist system to sl slander and lie about free market capitalism. But that's a whole other rant. Seth Rogen, who recently discovered just how butthurt some people can be with the re release of his movie The Interview, decided it would be a good idea to inform the world of how American Sniper reminds him of that movie that was screened in the third act of Inglorious Bastards. A film that honors one of our nation's finest veterans somehow reminds him of a Nazi propaganda film Quentin Tarantino's caricature of Adolf Hitler was diddling himself to before receiving an unyielding barrage of machine gun rounds to the dong at the hands of Eli Roth. Of course, both men have received an endless slew of vitriolic backlash for their ignorant comments, some on the part of real-life veterans and actual snipers. Particular quote, one of my personal favorites, on the part of the director himself, Clint Eastwood, who said, and I quote, Michael Moore, if you ever show up on my doorstep with a camera, I will kill you. And if Clint Eastwood says he's going to kill you, I'm... I'd be inclined to believe him. Rightfully so! Any calendar day that ends with a Y is ample opportunity to de degrade the ignoramuses who would degrade our military on impulse for being obnoxious dolts. 
I had up to exactly five kilometers above my head with the slathering horde of encephalopaths who would so giddily burn our veterans in effigy if given the chance to do so. Do you have any clue how little effort it takes to slander the military? Here, I'll show you. Here, let me just show you how easy this is. All soldiers in U.S. military are brainless murderers, and they should all be burned. They should all burn in agonizing hell. Check, check it out. There. You see how easy that is? It, it requires no effort to degrade men like Chris Kyle. Men who would fight, kill, bleed, and die for this country. Not only, not everybody can be the greatest sniper in U.S. history. Not everybody can take another person's life, and not everybody could do the things that Chris Kyle had to do and still possess the will to keep living in this crappy old world. But the men and women of the armed forces who do enlist and endure the absolute hell that is war don't deserve to be degraded by an ungrateful populace. They deserve to be honored and respected and remembered as people who are willing to put themselves through both the physical and psychological ringer. You know, it's easy for some bleeding heart to look at somebody like, say, Chris Kyle, who's shooting an RPG-toting kid in the middle of a war zone, and say, you know, he didn't really have to do that. There were other ways to resolve that conflict. Yeah? How do you know? How do you know you, you weren't there in the middle of the war zone right next to Chris Kyle? Let me explain something to you. When you were on the battlefield, and I know this because I come from a family of veterans who had quite a plethora of war stories to tell. When you're on the battlefield, or when you're facing a potential threat, there are times when you have to make a split-second decision. Just that. With decisions that could potentially cost not only your life, but also the lives of the men who are counting on you to make sure that you all make it back home alive. In war, so, so there are sometimes is no such thing as a good choice and a bad choice. You have either a bad choice or a worst choice. Picking the right choice can save lives. Picking the wrong choice can yield disastrous consequences. Chris Kyle was a man torn apart by war, and I, I say this having seen interviews by the man and having listened to radio interviews that he's given on Glenn Beck, shortly before I wanted to burn Glenn Beck in effigy for making stupid comments regarding watchdogs, but that's a separate topic. Chris Kyle was a man torn apart by war, but he never gave up. He looked inside himself and found courage to keep fighting, to keep his fellow SEALs safe and to make it back home, alive, to his family. And he found enough strength inside of himself, and potentially, probably with some help from God, to keep his to keep not only himself and his family together. He was a man who was willing to look God dead in the eyes and answer for every life he took. Now that doesn't sound like a coward to me. To the, to the people who are saying, F Chris Kyle, he deserved to die. He was a worthless coward. Chris Kyle was not a coward, folks. It's you. You who sit behind your keyboards and spout hatred towards people who don't deserve it. You who are so locked in your own little fantasy world where love conquers all and violence is never an option that can solve anything. Don't misunderstand, I'm not a warmonger. But sometimes, blood must be shed in order to preserve lives. And if you're not willing to shed it, and you're, not, and you're willing to hate on the men who are willing to shed it, that makes you a coward. I'm Chris the Liberty Gamer. So long and have a good one.